What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here, moving on to the next example in the rate of change section in advanced functions. So we're told that a ball is thrown off a hill and its path is modeled by this function, h of t equals negative 5t squared plus 3t plus 75. And there's two parts to this. We have to find the velocity of the ball at 0.3 seconds. And then we also have to find the velocity of ball when it hits the ground. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm assuming that you've watched all of the lecture videos in this particular section up until this point. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with the difference quotient and how it works and the different ways that you could find the instantaneous rate of change. Now, when we're going to be finding the instantaneous rate of change in this question, we're going to be doing it the long way where we have to do all the algebra with the difference quotient because many teachers require it to be done that way. But you may also be doing it in a way where, for example, when we're gonna be finding the uh, instantaneous rate of change at 0 0.3 seconds, you might be just, for example, plugging in like a value very close right to 0 0.3, like 0 0.3001, and then you're gonna be subtracting 0.3 here and then at the bottom it will just be like that right so you might be doing it this way where you're just doing calculations however I'm going to be doing it the way where we get the exact velocity where we're going to have the h and we're going to have to do all of the algebra however whichever way you're doing it in your particular class however uh, whichever way your teacher is doing it make sure that you get the same solutions that I am getting at the end of the question. So first thing I'm gonna do here is we have this um, h of t. Now because the difference quotient uses that h within it and it's different than this h, this h here represents the height, I'm going to rewrite this uh, function for h and I'm gonna do it in terms of f like that. Okay, so instead of having h of t, I'm just gonna have f of t equals this and this f represents the height. Now as we know instantaneous rate of change is basically going to be what? The limit as h approaches zero and you might not see this limit here I'll explain in a sec what that is. It's uh, f of a plus h minus f of a all over h and all this limit means here is that at the end once we do all of the algebra and the simplification and we get rid of this h in the denominator we then plug in h at the end all right so if you're still doing this process but you don't see this limit notation this is more from calculus don't worry about it all that means is that at the end we're going to be plugging in that very small value for h in this case because we're getting the exact velocity it's going to be an h value of zero Right, and so all we have to do is basically um, plug in everything. So f of a plus h, what we're going to do is plug in um, a plus h for all the t values. Now, uh, let me actually show this in different colors so you could see how it's all split up. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be finding this f of a plus h. Uh, expression. So it's going to be what? Negative 5 a plus h squared plus 3 bracket a plus h plus 75 like that, right? And so this entire red bracket here represents this f of a plus h, okay? And then this uh, last part here minus f of a, I'm going to put that as a green bracket so we're basically going to have minus, and then what's going to happen is we're going to have this green bracket right there. And what's f of a? Well, we're just plugging in a for all the t values. So we'll have negative 5a squared plus 3a. And then I'm going to write this here. I'm just running out of room here on the board. And then I'm going to close that off with a green bracket, right? So this whole thing represents this uh, f of a. And then that's still going to be all over h. Now, if you remember, what we have to do is basically expand all of this, and there's going to be a bunch of terms that are going to cancel out with each other. And then when you expand everything in the numerator, what you would end up with is all of these expressions, 
here. So when you do the expansion yourself, make sure that you do end up with this over here. This is actually a step where many students slip up with the algebra because there's a lot going on here. You got to foil out this a plus h, right? a plus h times a plus h. Foil that out, then distribute the negative 5, distribute the negative 1 into this green bracket. Right, so make sure that you're getting these expressions and the exact signs as well. And then, as I mentioned, a lot of things are going to cancel out. So like negative 5a squared plus 5a squared, that goes away. 3a minus 3a, 75 minus 75. And what you should be left with in the numerator is only uh, expressions that have an h attached to them because we're going to have to factor out that h to cancel out with this h. Now, Technically, for proper format, I should have been writing this limit as h approaches 0 this whole time. It's just I got a bit of a tight space to work with here, and then these lines uh, earlier were pretty long, but now I'm going to bring back that limit as h approaches 0. So what are we left with? We've got negative 10ah minus 5h squared plus 3h, and that's going to be all over h like that. Okay, now what we do, we can't plug in that 0 for h yet. So what do we have to do? Well, factor out an h. So if we do that, we end up with this, and then notice that and that cancel out. And now that those canceled out, we got rid of this h in the denominator, we can now plug in a very small value for h. In this case, we're plugging in zero because we're interested in the exact velocity at any value of a. And so if you plug in 0 for the remaining h is this negative 5 times 0, that's going to go away. And so what you'll end up with basically is negative 10a uh, plus 3. All right, so this negative 10a plus 3, that gives us the exact instantaneous rate of change or the exact velocity at any t value, at any time value a. All right, so it's really useful because now we could just plug in any time. We don't have to go through this process again. Now, I mentioned this in the previous videos as well. You can, if you wanted to, just plug in like uh, we're finding the velocity at what, 0 0.3 seconds first. You can plug in that a value of 0 0.3 initially here, and then you would do all this algebra, and then you would get the exact velocity here, the actual number. But the problem is, is that notice in part B, they're asking, what's the velocity when the ball hits the ground? So what we're going to have to do in part B is find the time when it hits the ground. And then what you'd have to do is you'd have to take that time and then plug it in again here. And then you'd have to go through this entire process again. Versus because we kept this general as A, what happened is we were able to get a general function and this in calculus is actually called the derivative as a little spoiler alert. But we have a general expression for the instantaneous rate of change. And now we could plug in any a value. We don't have to go through this process multiple times because we have the general expression. Now, when you have an a value, the algebra is a little bit more intense, right, within the process because there's less numbers and there's more variables to work with. So the expansion and stuff is a little bit more intense. But what's nice is that we don't have to go through that process again. We got this general expression for the instantaneous rate of change. Yo, yo, what's up? Quick little intermission here. Wanted to mention a few things quickly and we'll get right back into the question. First off, if you are getting value from this video, if you can please like the video and subscribe to my channel, it does help me out a lot. Number two, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the description box and there is a link that will take you to my website, allthingsmathematics.com, where all my courses are organized so you can watch the videos in order and I'd recommend doing so because lots of concepts carry over from one video to the next. Also, for lots of the courses, at the end of the chapters, you can find tests that you can practice with, and the tests have video solutions as well. Number three, if you feel like you need personalized help in tutoring, give me a shout. I currently tutor students seven days a week over Zoom, both high school and university students, one-on-one -on -one and in groups. You can text me 
we can discuss availability and then we can book a session. My contact details are on my website. And lastly, feel free to forward the website to any of your friends who are also taking the course, who you feel can benefit from these videos as well. Hit me up on all my socials. It's all things mathematics for all of them. Back to the video, we go. So now taking this general expression for the instantaneous rate of change or the velocity of the ball at any t value of a, well in part a, what are they asking for? They're asking for the velocity at 0 0.3 seconds. So what we would do is we would plug in 0 0.3 for the a value here. So we'd have negative 10 times 0 0.3 plus 3 like that. And this is actually going to be an interesting result. That's why I wanted to do this question. So notice we'll get negative 3 plus 3. We get an instantaneous rate of change of 0. And so what does that mean in the context of this question? So if you get an instantaneous rate of change of zero like this, what it means is it's actually the point at which the ball reaches its max height. Because the way that this looks like, right? So it's starting from an initial height of 75, goes up like this, and then the ball comes down like that. And so they're asking, they were asking for the velocity of the ball at 0 0.3, but what happens is at 0 0.3 seconds, the ball actually reaches a maximum height. And so if we were to draw a tangent at that maximum, what would the slope of the tangent be? Zero. And we know the slope of the tangent is the same as the instantaneous rate of change or the instantaneous velocity at any time, right? And so we know that at 0 0.3 seconds, that's actually when the ball is reaching the maximum height. That's actually the x value of the vertex. If you were to take this function, and graph it in Desmos, you'd see that the vertex is happening at this t value of 0 0.3. Now, if they asked us for the velocity at 0 0.2, it would be here, it would still be going up, so we'd be getting a positive velocity, right? We would actually get some kind of positive number here. If they were asking us for the velocity at 0 0.4, the ball would be coming down at that point, so we'd have a downward sloping tangent. If you plug in 0 0.4 here, right, into this general expression, you'd end up with what? Negative one meters per second. The negative means that the ball is going down, right? But we got an instantaneous rate of change of zero, means that in that split second at 0 0.3, right at that time, the ball is actually not moving and it reaches its maximum point and then it has a velocity of zero. And then right after that time, it starts to uh, go towards the ground. The velocity becomes negative, all right? So I wanted to go over a question like this in case you get something like this and then you're confused. Wait, what does it mean when we have an instantaneous rate of change of zero? It just means that the ball has uh, reached its uh, maximum height at that point. It's the T value of the vertex. Right, so that's the answer to part A. Now in part B, what they're asking, let's keep this diagram here. Uh, what they're asking us for in part B is what's the velocity of the ball when it hits the ground? So at this point right here, what is the velocity going to be? So the first thing we're going to have to do is actually find when it hits the ground. We're going to have to find that T value. And then we're going to have to plug in that T value into this equation to find the speed at which the ball is hitting the ground. We're going to have to find the slope of the tangent right at that point. Now, I know that this quadratic in this word problem wouldn't go through, but you want to picture it like continuing to go through. And so when we draw that tangent, we're able to draw one right there on the quadratic. I know it wouldn't go through, but you want to kind of think about the ball is going through the ground, right? And then at that split second when it hits the ground, what's the speed at which the ball is going through the ground, right? Even though it's not going to be going through the ground, kind of like mathematically, if you look at this in an abstract way, this uh, quadratic in an abstract way, that's kind of what you're doing, right? Because you might be thinking, well, right when it hits the ground, wouldn't the instantaneous rate of change be zero, like at that very, very instant, because then it's going to come back up? And technically, yes, but we're more so like finding the velocity maybe just like the split second before it hits the ground, right? So you want to think about it like it going through the ground, if that makes sense. So first thing we got to do, well, we got to find t when 
the ball actually hits the ground. And when is it going to hit the ground? Well, when our height is going to be zero, when our h is going to be zero, or our f in this case, since we uh, change the height to be represented in terms of f. So what you would do is you'd plug in zero, um, and then you'd have to solve for t right here. And then I don't think this is going to factor smoothly. So what I would do is I would put this through the quadratic formula and then get your t values. And if you go through that process, you're going to get two t values. You'd get a t value of negative 3.59 and then a t value of 4.18. And then this negative, obviously, you would ignore that. So the time at which the ball hits the ground would be 4.1a. Okay, technically that other intercept, if we were to extend this quadratic, it's happening here at a negative t value. But again, we're dealing with a word problem here and time can only be positive. And so we found the time at which the ball is uh, hitting the ground, but we want the instantaneous rate of change at that time. So basically the instantaneous rate of change at a t value of 4.18, well, we just plug in 4.18 for that a value. All right, so that's what's nice again about having this general expression. We don't have to go through that whole algebra for the difference quotient of where we would plug in that 4.18 and have like f of 4.18 uh, plus h minus f of 4.18, and you'd have to go through that whole process again. Um, so this would be negative 41.8 uh, plus 3, which would give us what? Negative 38.8 like that, meters per second. So that's the speed right there at which the uh, ball hits the ground. Okay, and if you're doing, again, the instantaneous rate of change in a different way than we did it, like in your class, if you're finding this time and then maybe you're doing 4.18001 minus f of 4.18 all over 4.18001 minus 4.18. Whichever way you're doing it, just make sure that you're getting the uh, same answer here, something very, very close to this. All right, but nevertheless, this is the speed at which this ball hits the ground. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.